Jerry Gagne. Welcome to Foys on Facebook. We usually do a little bit of a 15-minute program with me only, um, but we've gotten so good at this, we don't have as many glitches, so we started a little bit later. Uh, one of the first things you're going to know or, re or recognize or see is Gina's not with me. Um, she uh, wasn't able to make the show today. Hopefully we'll see her on the next show. Uh, and the way we work is uh, if you have a question, all you have to do is go on Facebook. And uh, Facebook in, is that the correct, the correct question? Send it on. Any question you have, whether anything about the pigeons or chickens, if we can help you out and answer your questions. And with me being alone today, um, I have nobody to poke fun at. So you're going to have to help me out. Uh, call, give me a question. And uh, if I uh, see a question and have, have a, I see something a little bit funny, I might poke funny too. So we've got lots to talk about. I hope I can fill the next uh, hour and two minutes to your satisfaction. Um, I've been up since six o'clock this morning working on this show nonstop. And uh, that's a lie. <laughs> what I usually do is six, sit down about 15 or 20 minutes before the show. I think we've been doing this for over three years. Um, and uh, we average well over 20,000 people for every show. So that means some folks are watching the show. Uh, lots of folks are watching the show and find, find it un unbelievable that this many people would uh, be watching a pigeon show. So thank you very much. If you're a regular uh, uh, video watcher, like uh, and I'm stumbling, but what the word. If you watch Facebook regularly, um, uh, you might have picked us up that way. Veronica is joining me today. Of course, she'll have to join us. Without Veronica, we can't have a show. Now, Veronica, when the questions come up, they'll be up a little up top because this uh, uh, camera, there, the camera will kind of block part of it. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a question, send it to us. What are we going to talk about? Well, I've got all things, lots of things to talk about, but I thought you might be interested. Well, I'm going to wait another minute to talk about what I want to talk about because our show doesn't officially start for another minute or so, so no sense in me getting into something um, and uh, having to start all over again. We're going to talk about some new mugs. You'll hear about them during our show. You're, we're going to be talking about something brand new, uh, Sign of the Times, Poise Math, that are going to be available in a couple of different uh, forms. Uh, also, if you go to um, Foy's, hi folks, if you're just talk, uh, just uh, tuning in, you can go to Foy's, we're selling some fantails and some show racers, have nothing to do with the auction we have, but if you're looking for some good rollers and some really terrific do. But uh, a while back, and maybe it was the last show, I'm not really sure, we had uh, a question thrown out, and we offered a $10 gift certificate. So I'm going to do that the same today. It's a different question, but it's kind of about me again. How many times, how many times has Foy's the company and myself as an individual, how many times have I moved my business? Now, we started in Maine. Uh, and it was called Ganya Brothers, and then there was Jerry's Pigeon Supplies, and then Foy's. So, how many different cities and towns have we had a pigeon supply business in? First correct answer will win a $10 gift certificate. I know it's not a lot, but uh, it gives us a little bit of fun. So, uh, I'm going to talk about, once we get the right answer, then we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Foy's. Um, I got a question this week from a uh, customer. They emailed me a question. Um, he had, um, if I remember right, yeah, here's what he said. Hi, Jerry, due to health problems, I haven't talked to you in a few years. I have the white rock Doves. 
uh, unusual. One of mine is old, and his sear, uh, the eye sear, um, is huge. I am not able to release anymore, and only I only have seven birds left. It doesn't look like um, coccidiosis, but it, the eye sear, the skin around the eye, is really large. Everything else in my loft looks just fine. So, that was the question. My answer to, to this particular gentleman, uh, let's see if he has his name. No, his name is, let me see here. Oh, Doris LeBlanc. So I'm saying his, so it was her. The answer to the question, in my opinion, of course, all of my, and all, I'm not a veterinarian, and, but I've had pigeons pretty much all my life. The bird is old, and that was the key. Some breeds, uh, uh, and some genetically, if you trace them genetically, are different than others. But as a pigeon gets older, many, and usually cocks, but not always, uh, grow a large nose wattle. There's a lot of skin up here. Uh, or it can be both the eye and the nose, but the eye is common. It gets so big, and all you're looking at is skin, and uh, sometimes you wonder how the bird can see. There's so much eye wattle grown uh, as they get older. It's rare to see it in young birds. Not unusual to see it starting when a bird's about three years old. Um, if a bird gets up, like I think I've shared with you before, I have a bird that's 15, 16 years old, and the I sear and the nose waddle are absolutely huge. So the older they get, um, sort of like me, the older I get, the more wrinkles I get. So that was my answer to the question. Um, while I'm thinking about it, and then we'll go to a couple of questions. Foys will be in Iowa uh, on the 4th and 5th of December. We'll be in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, and we are going to set up our usual display. We bring a lot of products, but in, in, I'm trying to think of words, but in a lot of cases, uh, people are disappointed um, because we didn't bring what they wanted. They expected us. We can't bring everything, uh, especially the big stuff because it fills up the truck so fast and the trailer. So my suggestion, if you are going to be at the Iowa show uh, on December 4th and December 5th, if you would like us to bring anything we sell within reason, now we can't bring uh, feed because it, it's heavy and takes up too much room. But if you want a bag of grit, because we know we won't sell lots and lots of that. Or uh, if you uh, want a large item, something that's very, very heavy, um, we'll be glad to take it for you and have it available for you at the show because like grit and like this, some of the cages and the other items that we have, um, they're very expensive to ship. The post office um, keeps raising their prices, and um, some of the product we've even dropped because uh, they were uh, so out of line when it comes to shipping. So if you want something, whether it's small, whether it's big, we'd be more than happy to bring it to you at the Iowa show. With that being said, the Grand National uh, for, the, for the National Pigeon Association is in January. I don't have the date in front of me, but you can get on the NPA website um, and we'll be there. So if you have something you want us to bring to Louisville, Grand National is in Louisville. There's no Louisville Young Bird Show, but there is a, the Grand National will be in Louisville um, and we uh, the same for that. So we talked about the older bird, cross that. Um, I want to talk about uh, the auction birds, and we're going to do it a little bit different. Uh, we had three pair uh, up for auction, and the auction stopped what time? Uh, two o'clock this afternoon? Mm -hmm. As of two o'clock, the auction was cut off, and we now can announce uh, the folks who uh, made the highest bid. Um, a lot of people, I was talking to Veronica before the show, mentioning that it's funny. Somebody will make a bid, let's say the bid is $200, uh, and then somebody will go 210 or 220 The first bidder, in so many cases, does not 
bid a second time. You just don't know, like all auctions, um, you might get yourself a bargain. So if you can bid 200, why not bid 220? Um, and you'll get, in many cases, you'll get the birds. We had, I think, one of the best auctions we've ever had, uh, money-wise. Um, the disappointing thing was the last show we had, we sold all three pair, really gorgeous pigeons. And for whatever reason, and I don't know whether somebody's playing a game with us or not, it, it just happens, all three of the people who bid, three different names, um, no, none of them ever called us, uh, you have until Monday to call us, uh, to give us your credit card information or that you're going to mail a check or you're going to pick them up. Uh, very disappointing. No, I have no idea um, why they do it, but it, I guess it's part of the world we live in. So we're going to talk first about, uh, Veronica, can you, can you move the camera? We're going to move over a little bit. I want to talk about the individual pairs and who bought them, maybe make a comment about them. All right. Yeah, I wrote it down somewhere. I'll just take it from here. Okay. Now, the first pair I want to talk about are the fan tail from the uh, Berg and... Um, <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> Polky, I'm sorry. Uh, the Berg and Polky partnership. Uh, I'm really, really surprised. I really thought these birds would bring in more money. These aren't the average fantails. I'm showing one and then I'll show you the other. These have been sold. And tell you a little bit about them um, is that when Fred sent me the birds, he says the car is a 2014. I'm sorry, it's band number 2014. It was a, it's a 2020 bird. And he, uh, Fred specifically mentioned, now remember, uh, these birds have been in a cage for a week now, so the tail feathers aren't what they could be or will be if you buy these birds. So this one is... Inches high, that's the tail itself, 13 and a half inches high. He says that it's got the really nice hard feathers, a very wide body. I'm going to move the bird around a little bit. There, come on. There you go. We'll just move that feather. Down. Okay, this is the fan tail that was sold. Whoever gets, who, the man who bought this bird is going to be very, very pleased. Heck of a breeder. Uh, and the other information I had was it's an excellent, has an excellent wide leg, walks on his toes, which is supposed to uh, be that way. And uh, for anybody looking for a really nice pigeon, a nice American fantail, this is, this is one. The man at Bakke, I'll give his name in a minute, just got himself a great, great deal. Now, get another bird. This is the mate to the bird. This is the hen. Get that tail up there now. If I, if, if I was a show person, I would spend a lot of time with this bird fixing his tail and doing what needs to be done. But here's what I can tell you about this bird. It's a hen, band number 1943. It's a 2019 bird. She won Second place in a class of eight young hens. Second place in a class at, at the Mid-American Fantail Club. She's a very small bird, round, clean body, hard feathered, 13 and a half inch tail, same as this her mate if you want to do that mating. It's a mated pair, narrow wing line. She has a little bit of white. I looked for it and couldn't find it, but there's a little bit of white in the tail. Uh, near the rump, and uh, her tail, oh, that's the reason she doesn't look quite like you, what you might expect. She's not done the molt. She's not finished with her molt. I can see a feather coming in right there. So, that's the pair. American Fantail. Seeing them both together. Hey, how you doing, huh? All right. Now, the winner of that pair of Fantails is here somewhere. 
Where did I, what did I do with it? There it is. I'm sorry. You see how well prepared I am sometimes. The Fantail. We had the bidder, his name is Robert Morrow, M-A-R-O, and he bought that. Robert, probably call you Bob. You got yourself a great pair, hand-picked by the partnership of Ferg and uh, Tolkien, who are fantail breeders, who, with this pair of birds, you're going to be competitive when you start to enter some of the shows. Okay, I'm going to go to the next pair. This is, this is two, and I mentioned in the text, I write, usually like to text a little bit about these birds. These are two racing homers. What's unusual, because normally we don't have them, uh, is two hens rather than a mated pair. Two hens. The, and their pedigree. I know the gentleman who raced, who donated these birds locally. Um, just terrific birds. This, from this family alone, he enters a lot of uh, uh, different races from around the United States as well as locally. And you can dare you. Um, I'm not sure whether he wants me to tell you this, but the bloodline from this pair of birds has won over $50,000 over the last number of years. So you've got two hens. The uh, black and white, the black one with the white flights, he writes, um, she's a half sister to a 2020 first place 250 mile winner. Also, she a uh, half sister to a bird that won first place in 366 miles, and she's a second place winner in a 350 special. Now that's the bloodline that produced these birds. Um, the checker hen, which I just love, the checker hen is one quarter brother to the black one with the white tail. They both do have pedigrees, and I'm just gonna go real quick so you might remember some of these. Uh, the foundation is called um, Good Black. She's a from she's a Hooven bird with uh, uh, coming down from you you would know these Wonder Woman Mona Lisa line. Oh, let's see. She is a 2020 bird, born, born June 10th, and I'm looking at the. There's a lot of Hooven in, in the background. Not all Hooven, but most of you know what a Hooban strain is. Um, I can see there's 325 mile birds, there's uh, 400 mile birds. So if you're looking for a good middle to long distance bird, either one of these would go. And we will supply the, the uh, pedigrees for these birds. The winner of the uh, auction and the one that bought, the bird that bought, brought the most in today, Bob Dewitt, I believe it's D-A-W, E.T. And while I'm talking, keep in mind, we're going to ask you to call right after the show, if at all possible. You have until Monday to call, but we'd love to hear from you today. Um, and I will ship these birds out to you next Tuesday. Come on. Um, so if you want to call with your credit card, call uh, boys uh, after 4 o'clock, after 4 o'clock Eastern Time. We'd love to get these on the way to you, and I ship on Tuesday. And when I, the, the bids that they offer, the bids including the, does not include the $50 shopping. Now, this is a pair that we offered to you last week, and uh, the gentleman who made the high bid last week never called, so we're putting them back up again. These are from the loft of Tim Heinrich, who Tim is the secretary of the um, National Pigeon Association, a well-known breeder of various breeds. He sent us uh, birds in the past. Uh, so these birds were, let's see, the German Modena. Here's what I wrote. It's a smaller bird, certainly. It has the same body structure, but a much smaller bird than the Modena as we know it. This is a German Modena. He's built differently, a little bit different in appearance from a head standpoint. But one of the things that's constant is in Modena is the feather quality. And this bird, these two birds have some beautiful feathers. They, as I say, Tim was the one that offered them up. Uh, and uh, the gentleman that bought the bird was, the pair, I'm sorry, 
Brian Hedges, H-E-D-G-E-S. And I can see to where the bidding started out at, I'll give you an idea, the bidding started out uh, at 150, and then another gentleman bid more, then another gentleman bid more, but then at the last uh, day, Brian Hedges called and went $10 over the third bid, and he won the bird. So we'll be shipping those. Please, please, do your best to call me if you're watching. If not, you can call. Uh, if you're not watching, you know, can't hear me, but I sure do hope you folks uh, will give us a, um, a call right after the show and give us your credit card. Thank you, Veronica. Okay, I'm going to take a couple of questions while we're setting up the camera. All right. Julio called, and do you have shipping boxes available? We, um, I will have, uh, Veronica, would you go ask Gina, I'm sorry, Kim or Dan if the boxes came in? I know for sure that we have the two bird boxes. Kim told me at the beginning of the week, we expect our shipment of the four bird boxes to be in yesterday. So we'll have an answer for you as soon as we can find out whether those came in. But if they're not in by today, I'm sure they'll be here Monday. They are definitely on the way. We were told that shipment would arrive here on the 5th. Thanks, Julio. Um, now the next question, um, Jerry Newport. Hi, Jerry. That's my niece-in-law. <laughs> yeah. Gary, nope, a lot more than that. Um, uh, let's see. Then an, uh, Phil, Phil Hubis guessed, first Jerry guessed five, Phil guessed six. Just a single. Pardon? Just, Just a single. single? But uh, Okay. So, Julio, if you're still watching, they should be here this Monday um, because, like I said, they were expected on the fifth. Phil, Phil called or sent his message in, uh, and he moved it up to six times. I'm sorry, guys. You guys aren't even close. I would expect my relative would know, have a better idea than that. My niece, uh, Bobby Jo, and her husband, Jerry, live up in Maine. Of course, most of you know that's where I came from. If you have a question, if you want to uh, take a hazard, uh, take a guess on uh, the question, and if you didn't catch it, the question is, how many different places have I had a city, we're talking about town, how many different places have we had the pigeon business, one sort or another? Julio's calling back, I say, how many roller pigeons can you put in each box? In the two bird box, we can put in four rollers. In the four bird box, we can put in five, no more than six rollers. So, um, that answers your question. Thanks again for checking with us. All right. Olympia, are the owls sold? Well, that's interesting. I got a call day before yesterday with the same question. Call me at home and wanted to know whether the uh, African owls were sold. The answer is no. The gentleman um, wanted to buy him very badly. And I said, call me Friday morning. Uh, between 11 and 12, I will be at Foy's, and if you want to buy them, um, I'll sell them to you for the last bid that we had. As I said uh, earlier in the show, we, we uh, sold all three pair on our last show, but um, none of the three called in to confirm their um, purchase of the birds, uh, or they didn't give us their credit card number, so they're still available. Um First person in Olympia, if you call, um, or if you just send a uh, send your information in, the answer is they're available. Two hundred dollars for the pair, fifty dollars shipping, uh, and I'll be off. Uh, well, you can actually call store, and Kim will take your uh, credit card number. Two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars total. That's the box, the airmail and the birds themselves. And I'll tell you what, those come from Tim Heinrich. In fact, you hold on. I'm going to get that pair.
Okay, I'm gonna put that one down. This is a mated pair. Yellow. Look at that bird head. Isn't that beautiful? Am I not doing it correctly? Thank you. All right. This is the yellow. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Uh, just about done with the molt. Wish I could make it stand. I'm maybe, well, that's the best I can do. It's a 2020 bird donated by Tim, the secretary treasurer of the National Pigeon Association, a well-known fancier all over the United States, um, and he's the one that donated the German owls. So, $200 for that bird, I mean for that pair. I would ship them on Tuesday. The last bit I had was $200. Here's the other one, a red. So you put a yellow and a red together. This bird is a 2020 bird also. And to show you, he is a member of the African Owl Club, which says something for him also. He's committed. Um, and uh, the Af AOC, which is an African Owl Club. Beautiful, beautiful bird. All right. So I hope I hear from you after the show, or you can, if you reply right now, I'll hold up that pair. If somebody else wants them, you would get them first. Okay. If you have any questions, um, like the folks are doing, just send them in via Facebook. Be glad to talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. I wanted to talk about something brand new for us. We made a a substantial investment in the equipment to do uh, some things we haven't able, been able to do. In the past, we've sold mugs, but we always would have to order um, two or three hundred at a time to get a price that made any sense. So what we've done is we've invested the money to uh, decorate our own mug. So I wanted to show you a couple of, of examples. Um, we can customize it. This is FOIS 2020. There's a picture of our catalog. Um, it's from Ron Simpson. I'm assuming it's Ron Simpson, the Simpson Law. Simpson Law. So if you're looking for a gift or a mug or uh, maybe for your own club, uh, we have these available. We can put anything on them that you want. In this particular case, on Simpson's Law, it says Vicki, Jerry, Dan, Veronica, Gina, Kim, and Sherry. Those are all uh, employees. We're really close to uh, Ron Simpson. We, so we custom make them, or if you want the same mug and you want a number of them at a time, we can do that for you too. Um, give you an idea, the mugs of course are ceramic, hold 11 ounces. With no name, they're $10. If you want to put your name on it or the loft name on it or something like that, it's an extra two bucks. So if your club wants the mug to hand out at the shows, or give to all of the club members, however you may want to use it. Um, they're available, $10. If there's no name, $12 with a name. The other thing that we have available, and we have the ability to do this now, we can do a lot of different things, and as time goes by, you'll find that we're doing more and more. It's a mask. It's a Foy's mask. It says Foy's Pet Supplies. We have it in a very small logo for Foy's, and we have it in a larger logo. Uh, we wanted to show you this to maybe give you an idea on um, maybe your club members when you go to the show, uh, maybe all of them can be wearing a mask with the uh, poise on it, but you can also order it any number you want, whether it's one or a hundred, excuse me, a little more. Um, we'll put your club on it with your logo, anything that you want on it, be glad to do that. If you have any questions at all, let me tell you the price of the mask. The, the one with the real large logo, let's assume this is your club, uh, is $15. The small one, the small logo, imagine it's your club or whatever you want on it, um, is $12. They're, they're really top quality. We didn't want to buy a cheap mask. We wanted you to have a good mask. So it comes with a filter. And the filters, you can order more if they want. So it comes with one filter when filters replaceable. Has a, a filter pocket. So in the mask itself, you put a, a uh, I can see it in the back. You can put a filter. So it means that um, 
after a while, you you may wonder whether that is still working with your, the mask. So the answer is, if it if the filter looks like it needs to be replaced, you can do that. Um, and it has adjustable straps. If you have a question on our mugs, or if you have a question on our um, masks, or if you want something made specifically for you, then we'd mo be more than happy um, to give you a quote. Call Foy's uh, and ask for Veronica. Call Foy's, ask for Veronica. Our phone number is 724-843-6885. So if you're interested, we'd be glad to hear from you um, about the mugs, about the uh, filter, the uh, masks, and in the future we'll be introducing some new things. Once again, if you have a question, I'd be more than happy to uh, answer it for you. Uh, Jerry and Phil, neither one of them has guessed how many different locations the pigeon, we I've had the pigeon vision in. How many cities? Well, how many different addresses have we had? So if you've got a, uh, I want to take a guess. We've had a guess, guess for five and had a guess for six. Um, very low. A $10 gift certificate to the person who comes uh, to the correct answer. Just send your uh, question in via email. It's odd. Uh, they haven't uh, responded, neither one of them. I would thought we'd have another question by now. All right. Here's what I'm going to do now. I brought this book in. This is the one I want. I keep this on my desk, and every time, see it says tips, every time someone calls in, or I do a lot of reading of pigeon books and so forth, if I see a question, then, uh, I'll, I'm sorry, not a question, but a tip, I'm going to write it down and pass it on to you. I've done this one other time. So I'm going to get to where I want to be in this tip book, and we'll go from there. Okay. This, uh, just a couple of things. I'm not going to read the whole page. Um, we talk sometimes about splayed leg. Uh, Olympia, you hold right on. I'm going to count. But uh, the, well, let me do it right now and come back to splayed leg. If I didn't count how, how well planned I am, because I run... Let me see. How many different places has Foy's been? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Olympia, no. <laughs> 16 is not it. It's lower than that. So if anybody wants to come in, first one gets a $10 gift certificate. I'm going to finish what I was talking about if there is another gift. Splayed leg. Uh, we've talked about this on the show before. And uh, a, a lady sent this in to me about splayed leg. What splayed leg is, is when you have a baby, it's always a baby, uh, that is just maybe old enough to come out of the nest bowl or onto the floor or already on the floor. Usually it's one leg, sometimes it's two. The legs go right out and they can't walk um, because those legs are sticking right out there. If you don't uh, catch it, within 24 hours, in most cases, unless you're really dedicated, uh, then um, the bird will never be the same. Now, how do you prevent that? It's, most, it's, it's a problem, especially when you only have young, one young bird in the nest. Because God created pigeons, and pigeons create two young ones in the nest. Uh, not that it, abnormal to just have one. So when you have two in there, they balance each other. When they're pushing to stand, they're up against each other, and you'll have very few cases of a splayed leg that's splayed all over the way out. Um, it, it's, it's more common when you only have one bird. And what she suggests is that you get a rock, a stone, uh, round stone, and approximately the same weight, a little bit more, a little bit less, and size as a baby pigeon that has started to feather out. And you put it next to the single bird that you have in the um, nest bowl, and that will allow the one, the, the stone will allow the other, the bird to push up against it and allow it to stand. So let me read this. The splay leg is a result of inadequate nesting material. 
Babies need to be able to uh, get a grip on the surface below them for their feet to remain in the position that it should be. Uh, it, so if you want to do a little bit of something about it, it helps if there is a nest mate. I mentioned that, two of them, not just one. Uh, the splayed leg can still occur even if you have two babies when they are unable to get their feet below them. One simple solution is to use prefabricated nest pads. What that means is we sell the coconut one, we sell the felt one. Uh, you need uh, man professionally manufactured nest bowls or, ne sorry, nest pads, little things. They're in our catalog, little round things. Um, for those of you who use paper nest bowls, and this is interesting, uh, what, you ha what she's suggesting to do is this option. Use some glue, Elm like Elmer's, Elmer's glue in a squeeze bottle, it's white. Uh, and you put your um, nest pad, uh, turn it upside down and put some Elmer's glue and then just put it right back down. It'll stay in place. And then squirt a little bit of glue. And if you're using, uh, and this is for straw or hay, or if you're not using a nest pad, spray it on the nesting material. It'll hold it together and it'll hold it to the bottom. So that's a little bit about splayed leg. Uh, if I get some time, I'll go back to it. Uh, we'll talk about something else. All right, Phil guessed on how many places I've been uh, at 11. And Olympia, and I recognize the name, I think she called me, I think, Jack, no. Anyway, someone called me today with that, oh, yesterday with that last name. She guessed 12. Sorry, you're both wrong. All right. Okay, Ralph Barba. How old can we breed? from a hen. I don't want it to sound, this sound crude, but to use an example of human. How old can a woman be before she can have children? It depends on the woman. Oh, and that's as simple uh, as I can possibly answer it. Some hens stop breeding at five or six years old. Um, I had a hen that was 12 years old, and she bred fertile eggs. Doesn't mean they'll stop laying, but what happens as they get older is the eggs are not fertile. So uh, there's no particular age. Uh, the answer is it depends on the bird itself. So the only way you're going to know is if you've got an old hen, the rule of thumb is try to put her with a, a young male uh, and see what happens. Uh, I would give it two rounds. If in, in two rounds, none of the eggs are uh, fertile, you know, then you probably uh, pass breeding age with that bird. All right, on the question, uh, I've been asking how many different places have I had in my pigeon business, one sort or another, um, and uh, I've got an answer of 10 and 9, and you're both wrong. Sorry about that. I'm going to come in again. Uh, Phil and Olympia. Come on, this is almost like an auction. There's got to be other people who want to make a guess, too. All right. Here's another question or tips. We're trying to uh, talk about tips today. I get this question, and I've an answered it before. Uh, how much room does a pigeon need when you're building a loft? You want to know how many birds you can put into that loft or section. Every two birds should have an area of about three foot by three foot by three foot. Uh, that's cubic yard. One cubic yard. Um, this is fine for a breeding pair. You know, if you're 300 square feet and nest boxes and so forth. Um, and then I had another a little tip. People send them to me. Uh, uh, it's a simple question. In fact, my wife asked me a similar question today about a customer wanted to know. One tablespoon, because a lot of the s medications and vitamins talk about CCs and MLs when you're reading them. Uh, those uh, everywhere in the United or everywhere in the world uses CL or ML. The United States uses ounces. So one tablespoon of liquid is equal to 15 cc or 15 ml, if that answers your question, because when you're mixing medicine, you want to be sure that you've got all vitamins, you want to be sure you have the right amount. Um, mentioned this before. When you're medicating your birds, 
a lot of your medications are in the cycling family. C Y C L I N E. Phil, no. <laughs> C Y C L I N E. Um, if you are medicating with anything that ends in cycling, and with their tetracycline, uh, chlorotetracycline, um, doxycycline. So if it says cycling at the end of the medication, take away the grit when you're using medication, uh, cycling. All right. This, this is a similar to a question I uh, received. Sometimes older adult pigeons, when introduced to a new loft, will refuse to mate with a new bird. Hi, Jeremy. No, the answer is no. Uh, way off. So, uh, and he says it's especially uh, true in homing pigeons or, or different flying birds where you introduce a new cock into the loft or to a new hen and sometimes they just never will mate. Uh, eventually they may accept a new loft but usually they don't want to mate until they've first accepted the loft itself. All right. Hi, Olympia. What's the best feed to small for small beak pigeons? That would be like an African owl or a satin net or anything with the, if you were here for the show earlier, uh, it's almost no beak at all. And the small beak pigeons, generally speaking, do not feed their own young. They People use foster parents. But what do um, the short beak birds eat? We have something, in fact, I'm feeding it to my birds right Can you hold on just a minute? I'll show you a sample. I love these questions, by the way. I, thank you. Gina was not able to join me today. Uh, so uh, I am doing the show by myself, and the que questions make the show, show so much easier. Here's what I'm feeding my African owls right now that uh, Olympia might be interested in buying. It's a no corn, all small peas, I mean all small seeds. The only pea in it is a really small one. That's um, not a maple pea. That's a, it is all small, small grains. With these small mouth birds or very short beak, they have a very difficult time with the big corn. I can see it here. I have all kinds of pigeons here for the auctions that we get in, uh, and I try to give them the feed that's appropriate. So there's safflower in here, there's peas, there's millet, um, just a little bit of wheat. Uh, so that's what I feed. If you're interested, we do sell it. It's conditioner, no corn, uh, and it's what I have in my loft right now. Uh, even in the winter time when you might want to add corn to your feed, if you are feeding the short bird, short beak birds, you, uh, if you're going to give them corn, make it popcorn because the small mouth birds can't get them big kernels of corn. All right. Let, um, let's talk about um, some tips that people send to me or I find when I'm reading a book. Most medications, vitamins, and supplements need to be kept dark and dry. So if you are leaving your bag where they're exposed to the sun, it's a good idea not to do that. You have to have a dry area. And when I say dark, it doesn't have to be pitch black, but it should be fairly dark or in a shaded area. Another thing I mentioned is the rotation of drugs. Once again, we've talked about this so many times. Uh, the one that brings, comes to mind quickly is Ronadazole. Um, if you are treating for cancer, you're using Ronadazole. If you keep using it, the birds develop a resistance. So it's very important if you're treating anything. Uh, if you want to treat respiratory, treat buy your res respiratory product, and if you have to use it again and six months or three months or one month, um, then you may want to have two different uh, respiratory products so that you can rotate them. Jeremy, why are my male rollers not wanting to fly? I'm flying them hungry and they seem to be healthy birds. Um, well, I don't know how long or how old they are, Jeremy, but what I would suggest you do with me, it's easy. 
you may be in a very flat area. I go up a hill, uh, which is a fairly steep hill across the street from my house, uh, where the rollers can see my loft, and I let them go from a basket. Now, it's going to take a little bit. Of, if you do this, at first, they, and you drop the door down to let them go, they won't come out. You're going to have to gently scare them out. But after you've done it three or four times, um, they'll know what's coming up. So you take them up on a hill or a high point as high as you can uh, and let them go. And after three or four times, boom, they're out of there. And they're going to be flying around in a circle before they come down. No other way. I don't think there's any other way other than what you could also try is get another breed like a tippler, same kind of same size bird, um, and release them with your tipplers who have more of a, um, a uh, sense of flying. They fly higher, but your birds will follow them and fly. So try that because it sounds like you're doing the right thing. Birds should be hungry. Don't look like, if you're going to let them go um, in the evening, um, don't feed them until evening. No feed until evening. Um, and that's what I would try. So, Jeremy, I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, you certainly can call me or send another question in. Um, my home phone number, um, people sometimes get upset that I don't answer the phone at home. I generally, especially this time of the year, I look at the phone number before I answer it, so it takes a little bit of time, and sometimes people will hang up because they did get imp impatient. Uh, it's my home. Um, could be in a bathroom, could be outside taking care of uh, my chickens, uh, could be anything. It's my house, could be shopping. So uh, I don't, you can't leave a message. What I tell people is if you call and I miss your call when I come home, then, uh, then I will answer your phone call. When I said these times, I get so many calls and they're so sneaky with these political calls. Um, it could be... George Simpson, George Simpson's calling and looking at my caller ID. Well, I don't know who George is. I'm assuming he's a customer, and I call. Turns out when you call, George Simpson, Simpson might want you to vote for Democrats or senator or something like that. So if you call, I'm going to give you my home phone number in just a second. Uh, if you have a pen and pencil, I'm going to give you my home phone number. I ask anytime between 9 and 5, uh, if you try to get a hold of me over a couple of days and I don't answer, call FOIs. They always know where I'm at, uh, and, uh, or if I'm at FOIs, I'll answer it, or I may be out, and they'll call me, and if it's important, I'll do my best to call you right back. 724 724-359-5355. When I answer it, I'll, I'll just say, Jerry. Um, some people get upset. They might call me. I've had people call me as many, as 10 times in one day. Same person. All you need to do is make one call. I will call you back. All right, Ralph, my father's name. I have two pigeons that are losing weight. What are the common bacteria or virus that will cause this? Oh, my goodness. There is no common bacteria, Ralph. Oh. Almost all pigeons, unless they die immediately, the same day or the next day, uh, lose weight. That's just part of pigeons. If pigeons sick, doesn't want to eat, and uh, like a lot of Amer uh, humans, uh, they may lose five pounds, and you would even wouldn't even notice it. But with a pigeon, uh, they lose any weight at all, and you can feel uh, feel them, and they're really really skinny. Generally speaking, more is usually a bacterial infection, um, but cancer will do it, worms will do it, um, coccidiosis will do it. Uh, so there's no common um, way to treat the fact that they're going light. I tell people, if you have a question like that, Ralph, give me a call at home. Those two pigeons, and no, no question, they're sick, and it's going to spread from bird to bird. Uh, so you've got to do something about it. Well, give me a call. I'll ask you some questions. One of the questions I know I'm going to ask you is, what color are the birds dropping? How long has it been going on? How long between you notice that they're losing weight and uh, they die? 
so I'm going to be asking you questions on my home phone number. And uh, like I say, try to call me between 9 and 5, Monday through um, Friday. Uh, occasionally, I will answer a phone and uh, after hours, uh, but uh, it's because I'm bored. <laughs> but uh, just call once or twice if you want to, because if I'm not there, I'm not there, and I'll call you back as soon as I do get back. Okay, going back to some of the uh, uh, talk about, people ask me about bleach on a reg fairly regular basis. Bleach is good in a pigeon's drinking water. Here's what I wrote. Bleach, bleach contains an el creates an alkaline condition, which is a condition that paratyphoid can, uh, has a very hard time to grow in the drinking water. Bleach, a lot of people put bleach in their drinking water, one or two teaspoons to a gallon on a regular basis, um, thinking that it will help cut down on the possibilities of um, paratyphoid. But paratyphoid is a bacterial infection. So uh, if you want to try that out, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, if you want to try to prevent a bacterial infection, one day of of bleach, just like one day of medicine, is not going to work. So when it comes to bleach, I would think a minimum of five consecutive days, just like medication. Most medications for bacterial infections are five to seven, sometimes longer. Um, well, with something similar, a household product, or something that you, a lot of people have in their kitchen cabinets, is people ask me about apple cider vinegar. Now, the key is apple cider. There's all kinds of vinegars, vinegars, my main accent would call it vinegar, but um, apple cider vinegar uh, is, the, and you want the most common one, although now there are a lot of copycats because it's such a popular product. It's made for humans, not for pigeons, but it works on anything. Uh, apple cider, again, vinegar, creates an acidic environment in the drinking water, which helps reduce the possibility of infection. So let me uh, read this to you. Change the water as often as possible. That means at least once a day. Uh, in this hot weather, maybe it's twice a day. Acidification of the drinking water is recommended at least a couple of times a week. Water that is acidic makes it harder for bacteria to survive. Organic apple cider vinegar will acidify the water. Two teaspoons to a gallon. Sometimes when you're looking at apple cider vinegar, you'll when you pick up the bottle, it hasn't moved in a, uh, a day or two, you'll see a settlement on the bottom of the apple cider vinegar. What that settlement is, is called is the mother. Uh, and that is supposed to be there. All apple cider vinegar that are organic, you're going to see the mother. Um, a lot of people suppose it's just uh, information. Back in the old days, we're talking about uh, 50, 60 years ago, um, people would, if they moved distance, this one a covered wagon or the old, old days where there weren't big supermarkets, they would carry apple cider vinegar with them. And when they made a, made a new batch, they would move, take some of the apple cider vinegar from what they were, had already made and pour some of it into the new apple cider vinegar because you're transferring the mother. And in some cases, uh, people can actually trace back, just like liquor, they can trace apple cider vinegar use back in their own family to 100 years with the same mother. All right. What I wanted to share with you, let's see if I can find it real quick, because I read it the other day and I thought, gee, this would be good for the folks to know about. Let me see if I missed it here. No, it's not there, I'll find it again. Okay, you don't want to give away a ten dollar gift certificate. Nobody's guessed how many times I'm going to have to, and I'm going to. Well, remind me in another two or three minutes to go over this. If we don't have a winner, I'll still do it. All right, Tara. Hello from here in Pittsburgh. Why, well, hi. What borough is when? Uh, one pigeon's poop is solid yet greenish, even after water 
after medication with four in one, uh, normal or not. Um, a lot of times green uh, is created by stress. Now this may not be the case with your particular bird, but if you catch a bird or put a bird in the basket or move it or move its nest box or whatever, and it's stressed or the flying birds and there's a hawk, that's stressful uh, and it'll cre create green drop. Uh, four in one, you guys have heard me say this before. Four in one or five in one are our most, most popular products. I don't like either one of them. Uh, if you're going to use a multi-use product, I believe it's three-in-one canker, coccidiosis, and worms. The other one, four-in-one, contains an antibiotic to help uh, treat um, or prevent teratyphoid, which is a bacterial infection. So every time you're using three-in-one, you're giving a bird antibiotics that they don't need. Uh, my suggestion is three in one. Okay, as far as the solid yellow greenish, if that's the only bird, it could uh, just be stressed. But green drops are usually a sign of a bacterial infection unless it's very ripe, very light green. Still no, everybody's too low on how many places I've been. Anyway, uh, thank you for your question. Wonder where in Pittsburgh. I hope maybe you'll, you'll join us uh, sometimes at the store. We're open nine to five. Uh, very, very easy to find. You just take 376 um, to, to a sign that says last exit before um, toll. You get off, turn right, and that's the road we're on. Elmer, you guess you're way too low, Elmer. Way, way, way too low. If you don't know what we're guessing, I asked people if they could figure out uh, I think we're going to go over time, but I want to talk about this too. Okay, a um, lot of, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, green droppings, um, if they're lime green, very yellowish green, that's usually coccidiosis. But stress, that, that'll create it too. A Bellevue, well, I used to have a friend in Bellevue, but that was 40 years ago. Uh, nice town, Bellevue. All right. What I'm going to do is that's as far as because we've only got five or six minutes. So I'll, let me go in here and mark that where I ended. So the next time I use my tip book, I will not use the same tips. Okay. I want to. I'm going to clear the deck, so to speak. No, we're not done. No, you're interrupting our show. That, that's Miss Vicky. <laughs> Hi, Miss Vicky. You going home? Bye. Bye bye. Okay, let me move that. I want to talk about something people have asked for for years and years and years. We talked about, remember, I talked about the mugs and the masks. We also do business cards. Uh, call Veronica, 724 843 6889. If you want anything made uh, that's custom or special or for your club, we're more than happy to give you a call. We're going to talk about this. We just got them in. This comes from the country of Spain. They have the same problem there uh, that we do in the United States. And the problem, of course, is hawks. I know you can't see my face, but I wanted to show you the cage. Thank you, Veronica. This is what I call an animal trap. You can get almost anything in it but it'll catch hawks. Um, and I advise you that it's against the law to hurt hawks. So if you catch a hawk, it has a handle that you can pick it up, take the hawk maybe uh, miles away to a wooded area and let it go. The way it works is you put a pigeon or a small chicken right in here. Something that's alive, not a dead one, that it attracts the hawk. So there's a way to put it in. These little red buttons come off and the door opens. You, you put your pigeon in there and um, let it down. Now, if you are going to leave it out there all day on a hot day, what, Elmer, you're very close. Uh, so you put your hawk in here, uh, your pigeon in here, maybe give it some water and feed so that, if it, especially if it's a hot day, it's not going to affect it. Now, the key to this 
Here's, I'm gonna come, let me see how I can, I'm gonna come around. Okay. The way this works, there's, there's the door here and there's the door over there, meaning you can put, uh, the, the hawk can go in either door, because usually when a hawk lands, it'll land here or it'll land on the ground and walk all the way around trying to figure out how to get in. So what you do is you lift this door right here, okay? And then this piece here goes right like that. This is for no, the, the, not the, the, the red tail hawk, won't work, too big. But the bird, the hawks that usually bother pigeons are the little cooper or the gosh hawks, and they're small enough. When they go in here, they have to go all the way in, and they touch that. You can see it drops right down, uh, and the bird, the hawk, jumps forward. It's not going to try to turn around, won't have enough time to come out. So all you do is lift it, whoops, you lift it, you open it up a little bit, and pop that right back in, and you'll catch yourself a hawk. But it'll also catch smaller animals, it'll catch raccoons. It'll catch just about any small animal. Um, it'll catch cats. So I wanted to show it to you. It's made in Belgium. I'm sorry. It, it's made in Spain. It's not in the catalog. It's brand new. We just got it in and been looking for something like this for years. So if you're looking for a trap, catch just about anything from either side, which means you can actually catch two at the same time. Elmer, you are so close. Um, so, it's $79. That's an introductory offer. We brought a lot of them in. I think we're going to have a, a winner with this particular trap. So if you're looking for something to, to solve um, the heart problem or any other problem, uh, this might be what you want. $79. And when you call, just tell them you saw the trap on the show, uh, and uh, any of our people would be able to uh, take care of you. Well, you know what? I thought we were going to have to go over time, and we're not. We're going to be right on time. Uh, put this away. I just didn't want to take the time to slide that, but I can't. Okay. We're going to have uh, do a show in two weeks, which would be the 20th, is that correct? Today's the 6th, I think. So, two weeks, not next Friday, the Friday after, we'll do it again. Um, we'll have new birds that'll go up next week that you can get on, uh, for, uh, for us on Facebook, or get on Facebook and look up the birds that we're going to offer. Um, I know that we're going to have some great birds, uh, not, I can't tell you for sure, um, what will be, but we will have them. Uh, I wanted to mention um, the money that uh, now I know I'm going to go over a little bit. The money that we get in for the auctions all go to the Legacy Fund Trust, which is part of the NPA. Um, and we are finally getting to a point where we can uh, help those in need or any situation. Uh, we never, ever, ever spend the money that you donate, we take in from the donation of birds or just a straight donation. Um, all we can do is spend the amount of money that we earn, the earned income, which is interest and dividends and things like that. Um, but we're at a point now, in fact, we're close to $100,000 invested, which means that we're able to write larger checks until we get to $100,000, um, in which we're very, very close to. For example, even if we take in, uh, if we have $100,000 invested, we only take in 3%, that's $3,000. Now, the reason I thought it was so important to talk about this, I'll, um, go, I don't want to scare you, but it's a fact. There's a federal... Um, I don't know what the word is. It's called the... Oh, it doesn't matter. There, Jerry, sometimes you've got to get more prepared. Anyway, it's ACT, American... It's called ACT, ACT. doesn't matter. 
If you need more information, you can contact me or you can contact the National Pigeon Association and they'll call and tell you what it's all about. A group has made a proposal that any kind of bird, which includes pigeons, uh, cannot be kept. They feel you should not be able to keep your, uh, keep your pigeons. So if this goes through, within four to five years, and it's up now, uh, and it'll take a while for it to be passed, but it's going before our legislature, and it's very strict. It says you can't keep pigeons anymore. I don't know what we're going to do. Not just my business. I'm okay. I'm old enough, so it's not as it's five or six years from now, probably won't be here. But all of the money that we raise this year, the interest and in earned income, uh, will be given to uh, the NPA to use to fight this new regulation that's coming. Um, the NPA has also joined with the American Racing Pigeon Union, which has 6,000 members. The NPA has probably 1,500, 1,600 members. So we're going to give them all the earned income from 2019 to help fight this. We've already committed that the money we raise in 2020, this year, uh, the earned income from that amount of money is all going to go back to help fight. We're going to do everything we can for national. Phil, you are correct. You hold on just a minute. Uh, Elmer, you're not. Phil, you are correct. Uh, why don't you call Foy uh, after the show, and I'll get your name and address. Just ask for Jerry. So when we auction off these birds, you are helping. You're doing your part to keep this hobby going. It isn't, I mean, we all worry about the hobby dying, but what if you can't keep pigeons at all? Federal government is considering this because a group of people think it's wrong. So um, if you want more information on the act, it's called ACT, American, no, I wrote it down and all. Um, call, for, uh, call the NPA or email the NPA uh, and uh, go on, go on the, um, the website, their website, and they'll give you the information. They'll send you a copy of that. So Call the NPA or email the NPA and ask for a copy of the Act, A-C-T. We need money. If you just want to send a check, make it out to NPA LFT, and not necessarily uh, from the auction birds, any amount. Give us $10, $20, $100. Um, we're going to fight this as much as we possibly can um, at the federal level. Well, is there anything I missed? We're going to do a show. It's going to be next, the 20th, a week, not next Friday, the Friday after. If you have any questions, you want to talk to me at home, 724-359-5355. Or if you want to uh, track me down at FOI, sometimes I'm here to call home or not. I'm not there. Then call FOI, and they know where I'm at. And FOI is 724-843-6889. Made it through. Uh, appreciate if you've been with us for the whole hour. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again in a couple.